uh, we're going to have uh, Professor Jun Ha at the School of Civil and in Environmental Engineering at Yonsei University. Professor Ha, please go ahead and begin your talk when you're ready. The title of his talk is The Accelerating Disruption of Universities, Outlook and Challenges in Korea. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it's an honor to give a presentation regarding the future of university in Korea after COVID-19. So the title has introduced the accelerating disruption of universities outlook. And so I have only 20 minutes and let me start now. And introductory, so this is the contents of my slide. So I would like to start with you know, four items. What is really COVID-19? There are numerous researchers and big name uh, scholars make some you know, statement regarding COVID-19. I have my own, so I would like to give it to the audience. And then what kind of changes at university is being caused by COVID-19, particularly in Korea? And I would like to explain like, what is really digital transformation in a short manner. And then what do you have to do? You know, as the title goes, we will encounter you know, crisis and challenges which is even like a matter of survival for most of university. Okay, so these are the four items I would like to cover. And what is really COVID-19? So there's the old uh, famous adage goes, you know, the future is already here. It's not just evenly distributed by William Gibson in the year 2003. So I think we can apply you know, this adage now. So in reality, even though some people think you know, COVID-19 is a real big thing, but I think it's basically the changes which are caused by COVID-19 is nothing really new. I would like to say the future is already here and it, is, it will be rapidly distributed due to, uh, due to COVID-19. So that's what I believe the meaning of COVID-19. So the, that's the reason why my title was right, uh, accelerating the disruption of universities. Everybody knows that university will face a huge disruption anyway. And I think COVID-19 will accelerate the changes and the disrupt disruptions. So what kind of changes, what kind of right, disruption will occur to universities? So I would like to make this you know, five major trend in, in fact, as I mentioned it, it's nothing really new, but these changes will be accelerated. Decrease of new enrollment, college enrollment, and increase of online courses, and new perception of universities, digital divide, not only for students, but also universities, and expansion, which is of you know, big name IT companies, which is the most formidable things that we have to watch out. Let me start with you know first things. Everybody knows, particularly in Korea, the decrease of college student enrollment is downward, as you can see. But it was abnormal, right? Over 80% of college enrollment, it was abnormal. The average college enrollment in OECD is about 40%. So the decrease of you know college student enrollment it's downward, as you can see, that trend will be accelerated. And such you know, symptom was well known in Korea, right? You know, university community, let's say, there was an you know, organization named you No know, Academic Elitism. This name, we call it Hakbar Omnen Sawe. They dissolve their organization and make such a statement, such a statement. Right? When capital monopoly has become more dominant, and academic elitism often fails now. So such weakening in a trend of university authority is everywhere and everyone realizes it. And this will, this kind of trend will be accelerated. An increase of online courses, which is inevitable. It was really already started out, uh, outside of Korea, but this kind of trend will be accelerated. For example, uh, university, California university systems, they are running 10,000 online courses even before COVID-19. 
So such trend will be accelerated for sure. And uh, at the same time, University of Illinois MBA school, which is one of the top tier MBA school, they ceased offline MBA in courses. So they are not running offline MBA course anymore. So everything is online. Can you believe it? That's the trend out there. But such trend will be accelerated. And this kind of uh, like prediction and future was diagnosed by you know big name professors like you know Creighton Creightonson, which is who is very famous for his theory of disruptive innovation. He even mentioned that can we commoditize the professor? He foresee foresaw the value of online courses like ten years ago. And I'm running a MOOC. And this is before and after COVID-19. As you can see, like after outbreak of COVID-19, the enrollment of my course is skyrocketing. As you can see, the number of enrollment is skyrocketing as well here. And the such trend will impact, make some impact, significant impact on Korean universities as well. For example, Koreans on Coursera was doubled after COVID-19. And they realize, like professors' course, it's not really unique. They can get even better courses out there. Isn't it formidable? Like all the professors now have to think about competition, not only in their own department or in the same country, but also outside of the country. And new perception of universities. Think about it. When I was a student, professors had a huge authority. Of course, you know, 30 years ago, even 40 years ago, how they enjoy such authority thanks to information symmetry. But now, do you really think professor, we professor can really have the same authority? Not anymore. So all the unevenness or asymmetry of information disappeared. And they realize that they can learn an you know, academic subject, not only from professors, but also any other you know, sources. While realizing such trend, they can see, they can realize the real value of universities, not only learning some subject, but also even more for like, meeting new students, new friends from everywhere, even all over the world doing something together, study together, and work out together. And such an you know, experience, which is really the value of universities. And they realize that. So this is the university. The first trend I would like to make some emphasis is digital divide. Everybody says, like, and concerned about digital divide, particularly for students, rich, rich student, I mean, students from rich family, they, they don't have any negative impact after COVID-19. But for students from poor you know, background, their, their position is you know, downward. But that is nothing really new. As you can see, this paper was published in Science Year 2015, along in the MOOC. They, for example, Coursera and edX, which are leading MOOC platform, claim that they can democratize education. Really? It's not also true. It was not true. After checking out that, you know, the social economic background of the learners, they realized that MOOC was enjoyed by, you know, individuals from wealthy communities. So those kind of patterns will be accelerated. More serious problems for universities is digital divide for universities. Like Peter Drucker, he mentioned it like 30 years ago, you know, significant portion of university will disappear. And New York Times year 2013, like some university, 25% of the university who cannot present enough credential, they'll disappear. It was mentioned like eight years ago, but year 19, year 2019, a lot of universities start failing and collapsing and go bankrupt. And all that you know, changes will be accelerated after COVID-19 altogether. 
And one thing that I would like to make the, the last but the highest emphasis is most formidable issue is, is expansion of big name IT companies. They will enter into education market for sure. Why? Why is simple? Because they cannot really ignore such a juicy you know, market and huge market. As you can see, education market size worldwide, the data was from is from year 2015. So around six thousand billion dollar, six thousand billion dollar in Korean, about seven hundred. It's a huge money, right? Ten times, you know, more than annual budget of Korea, and only U.S. higher education market size is six hundred twenty-three billion dollar from year 2015. Maybe year 2020. It could be somewhere like you know eight hundred, or definitely over seven hundred billion dollar. It's much more than annual budget of Korea. The big name IT company, they have to survive. They have to keep growing. They're not gonna let this market be ignored. So I'm pretty sure that they will enter into this market with one way or another. So I think uh, this is just enough fun stuff, but I don't have enough time, so let me just skip it. So just let me give you one question. What if MIT and Google found a new cyber university? UNIST can survive? Yes, I believe UNIST can survive. KAIST can survive? Yes, I believe so. But a lot of technical universities, can they really survive? Perhaps not. So all these changes can be summarized into a single word, digital transformation. From business perspective and economic you know, perspective, there are some definitions regarding digital transformation. But other than just an academic definition, I would like to give you, you know, one simple answer, the definition of digital transformation. This is the digital transformation, BTS online course. Cert. June 14, year 2020, just in a month ago, the concert, 90 minute concert, attendance was over 750,000 attendance. 750,000 attendance. And then the revenue was over $20 million. This is three star transformation. Can you really believe, like, concert, what is really concert? It's a like physical atmosphere. We can go there, wait, and like shouting and like enjoying that atmosphere, that was kind of physical presence, like skinships and everything. But now it's being changed online. Higher education, in comparison with this in you know, the music industry and concert, concert industry, is kind of piece of cake from digital pers transformation perspective. Simply speaking, it is inevitable. So we have to, to survive. I mean, the higher educational institution. Now we are facing crisis, whether or not we can survive, like matter of survival. Digital transformation is inevitable. So then with accepting such accelerated changes, what do you have to do? The action items that I would like to propose, we have to start with setting up philosophy. Answering why we have to you know, make a digital transformation of the university or of our university or my university. For example, we have to set some kind of you know, high level uh, philosophy. For example, from Yonsei University, we consider online course, development of online course is considered as a vocational core on the servant relation, uh, leadership. That while we offering the best online courses to the world, we can serve the world. As a Christianity university, that's the best way to serve the world. And what we, can, what we receive, now we can provide them to the world. That is more high level you know, objectives and more practical and realistic objective of such effort has to be student-centered. Okay, so what we have to take or make such a difficult hardworking uh, digital transformation is because with which we can provide a better learning opportunity and environment to our students. 
that has to be the philosophy. At the same time, we have to make a consensus from you know, university communities for sure. And then based on the philosophy and consensus from university community, we have to develop customized online courses, which is best fit to our students. I believe every single university has different uh, types of students. For example, Unist and KAIST may have you know, similar uh, students with similar background. Yonsei University may have a little bit different from Unist and KAIST. Or some other university has their own. We have to customize. Online courses is not just online course. We have to customize them to make it best fit, best you know, serve to our students. But now we are only doing just you know converting offline course to online course. That's not really development of, of online courses, or it's not really considered as digital transformation. We have to be more careful. We have to make it customized to serve our students, our own students. While I'm talking about it, you have to keep that in your mind that the new trend, which is adaptive learning, which is not only for just you know co conversion from offline to offline, uh, offline to online, we have to make while we using online platform, we can have a lot of data from students. So such data has to be well made and well analyzed to serve better education for our students. So I would like to say that you know data, 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 which is the key. While I'm talking about the data which has to be connected with to provide a better campus life service to our students. So at UNC University, we try to you know, provide us this kind of service to our student, data-driven smart connected campus life service. Student making, generating a lot of data. Based on data, we can provide, we can understand our student and we can predict our student. Even we can provide some prescriptive measure to our student in order to make our student go to the you know better directions. So this kind of big picture things can be done while we convert everything through digital transformations. Let me skip this to part. And another important thing that we have to keep in our mind while throughout this digital transformation, extracurricular activities. Like this is a kind of big uh issue that i would uh, in order to discuss this part i have to present a lot of issues but simply speaking the wave of our the teaching for our student has to be changed everybody says it while if they know about you know, a little bit about education for the future you know figure the future student who can cut out for the future world they must have Diverse, I mean, the capacity of diversity, networking capability, and resilience capability. On the left side, which is plantation, eucalyptus plantation, that's the you know kind of symbol of the student that we educate in the past. But now, afterward, we have to teach and make them learn and grow towards like uh, the picture on the right hand side. They have it has you know diverse background and understanding of different subjects. And then they have in the capability network, a lot of people, not only people, but also different subjects. And they have some kind of resilience in order to you know, fight against the new challenges and new changes. How to do it? With in-class or online courses only? I don't think so. And a lot of people think not, do not think as well. Extracurricular activity make our student do something different from the conventional uh, coursework. So another important issue for brick and mortar universities, KPI for the future as physical presence. What is really in a different aspect of brick and mortar university? In other words, traditional universities. We have the space, we have substantive space. How we can utilize such valuable asset is gonna be key performance index, even after digital transformation. It's irony, but 
I think that's the way. While you know everything is more and more digital trans digitally transformed, human being, which is basically enjoying always you know, looking for some skins, meeting people, I believe university has to be the platform where people can meet and do something together. So we have to utilize this campus space, how to do it, and how make it you know, in a unique manner. That's the really important aspect of survival. And let me just skip this part, but positioning around capital power is a really important issue. Lessons from European University, I don't have enough time so that I don't like to spend you know, these figures, but European University literally saying they failed due to financial issues. So as a private university, we have different you know, positions, like Kai Stan Unist, they don't, you don't have to worry about the you know, financial issue, but as a private university, as Yonsei University, has to think about how to survive under this difficult period of time. Finance really matters. So positioning around capital power, you know, along with that expansion of big name major IT companies, we have to set the boundary. What we can give to the industry or what we cannot, what we should not give to the industry. It's not a really easy task. We have to think about it and we have to position ourselves well around capital power, enjoying their capital, but never forgive the essence of higher education. I cannot give the answer to the question, but we have to think about it and we have to set the boundary. This is you know, one of the final slides. Universities have faced challenges all the time from a historical perspective. This was the first international conference held in, at, uh, in Yonsei University in 1972, around 50 years ago. I took a look at this uh, you know, conference book, proceedings, and they mentioned about challenges and crises. So universities have faced change all the time, I can say that. But now we're facing another types of crisis and challenges. Only the difference might be the speed, change of the speed. So I believe some universities can survive, others, didn't, uh, others don't. How can you determine the boundary, the survival and you know, universities who cannot survive? I believe Digital transformation is one of the key. As a concluding, then what is COVID-19 accelerating disruption of universities? That will be this kind of trend will be accelerated. And what kind of changes is being caused? Not being caused, being accelerated by COVID-19. As I mentioned it, the five made the trend. Digital transformation is really the key. It is inevitable, but why are we doing so? These are the action items. We have to set up the philosophy, customize online course to our students, and extracurricular activities, and physical presence, and finance, financial, financial issues. And uh, the last but not the least, I would like to make the, the most the highest emphasis, which is leadership and fellowship in university community to fight against this in a crisis occurred by, caused by COVID-19. So consensus and leadership and fellowship and working together inside the university communities, the only the way to survive after this upcoming disruption of universities. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ha. It was very informative and insightful talk, and I think a lot of university members probably share all the, you know, problems that you mentioned and then thought uh, to, you know, to, you know, when we are facing these difficulties and what to do next. Okay.